You are an advanced English speaker, but you want to get to that next level of English fluency and you really want to learn those nuanced phrases that are much different than the English that you learned in the classroom. If you've been speaking English for a while, you know that Americans sound so much different than what your English teacher taught you they would sound like. In today's English lesson, I'm going to teach you 26 idioms and I'm going to teach you the idioms in pairs because it will help you remember the pair of idioms. One is going to be the opposite of the other. I think that you will be challenged by these idioms, but you will also be able to remember these by learning them in pairs. So stick with me throughout this lesson so I can teach you 26 everyday English idioms. My name's Kayla, I'm an American English teacher. Visit EnglishWithKayla.com to try out my six weeks upgrade to native English course where you'll learn over 200 new phrases that will help you speak like a native English speaker. Let's get started with today's English lesson. To go hard on someone or to go soft on someone. So I think of these phrases as talking about discipline, especially when it comes to being a parent to a child or a teacher to a child. When I was growing up, my mom was really hard on me when it came to school because she really wanted me to study and be the best student that I could be. Well, sometimes as a parent, I feel like I am soft on my kids. Just sometimes. This is the opposite of being hard on my kids. Maybe I let them stay up a little later or if they get in trouble, they don't get that big of a punishment. So when we say that someone is going soft on someone, it means that we're not really giving them a good punishment for what they've done and we're just being really nice to them, especially when we're talking about children. These next two idioms are really common when you want to say that someone is behaving in a way that is really mature. So if you take the high road, it means that you're not going to be very petty in an argument. Let me give you an example. So if somebody is having a party and they invite all of your friends, you share a lot of mutual friends, but they don't invite you, you kind of feel like that's a personal insult to you. But if you take the high road, you'll say, I really hope that you enjoyed your party. And this is mature behavior. Now, if you take the low road here, you might say, I hope your party was terrible. So that's not very mature. Even though your feelings were hurt and you feel kind of wronged, you're going to take the high road and you're going to act polite and kind. And if you take the low road, you are going to be just as low as them, just as impolite as they are. So I'm coming back to the example for these two idioms. When a child asks you, can I have a cookie? and you cave in, you'll say, oh yeah, you can have a cookie. You might have said earlier, like no more cookies, no more treats. But if you cave in, it means you go against what you said your decision was and you let the child have a cookie. Or the same sort of example, if you say you have to go to bed at seven o'clock, it's I'm going to be firm on my decision. And then the child says, please, can I stay up a little bit later and watch a movie? and you cave in, it means you let them stay up later. Now the other idiom that I'm going to teach you here is to be firm on your decision. If you stand firm on your decision, it's the exact opposite of caving in. It means you're going to be very strong on what your opinion was or what you said was going to happen. So in this example, you could say, no, there are no more cookies, I am standing firm. Or you could say, no, your bedtime is seven o'clock. You must go to bed. I'm standing firm on that decision or I'm standing firm on the rule here. So this simile, to be happy as a clam, it's a very old expression, but I will say this one is still pretty common. I wouldn't overuse this because it is older. So it's used more in a joking way or you know a light fun way. But if I say, wow, you look happy as a clam, that means you look very happy, very excited about whatever you're doing. Now, a good opposite phrase of being happy as a clam, if someone looks very sad or something very bad has happened to them, of course you want to be sensitive, but you could say, they are a sad sight to see. This idiom just means that they look very sad, you could say down in the dumps, 
and maybe they are disheveled, like they look like they haven't showered in many days, or maybe they're a sad sight to see because they haven't even gotten dressed for the day, they're still in their pajamas. That's how you would use this idiom if someone just looks like they're sad physically as well as mentally. If you work at a business where you have customers come in, like a restaurant or a store, and there are so many customers, you don't get one minute to even just think or one minute to, you know, just stand there and relax. You are completely swamped. So we say swamped with business. Think of this as if your customers are water. If you're swamped, you're like standing in water. You can't get out of the water. If you're swamped with business, you have so many customers that you can't even stop to think for a moment. Now, the opposite of being swamped idiom that I'm going to give you today is to be a couch potato. Be very sensitive and careful with this phrase because it's quite rude to say that someone is a couch potato. It's pretty much just saying they are lazy. In English, we usually only use this phrase in a self-deprecating manner. This means just to kind of make fun of ourselves. So I'll say, I was a complete couch potato last weekend. I didn't get out of bed at all, and I watched Netflix and movies all day. I never get to do that because I have young kids, but I have been a couch potato before, especially on weekends after a long work week. In English, when you have a very grand, wonderful opportunity, Maybe it's in your job, maybe you're going to get a raise and you're going to get a new manager position or maybe you're about to go to school with a very large scholarship. We would call this a golden opportunity. When something is a golden opportunity, we say that you can't pass the opportunity up. You can't say no to the opportunity because it's just so good. So golden and opportunity, these words go together when it's a good opportunity. We say this very commonly. Now the opposite of having a golden opportunity at your job is to be in a dead end job. When you are in a dead end job, it means there is no opportunity to get promoted or even make more money within the job. Now you don't want to be in a dead end job especially as you get older because you want to have more opportunities from the work that you're doing. If you describe your own job as a dead end job, you might say, I have such a dead end job, I really need to start applying for new jobs just so I can better myself and make more money. So if we talk about a golden opportunity, it's a great job. If we talk about a dead end job, it means there's no room to improve yourself or move up within the job. The most common way that English speakers say that they are very annoyed with something, and I mean extremely annoyed with something, we say that we are sick and tired of it. So maybe you've had this situation happen to you before. Maybe you have very loud neighbors and these neighbors are partying at night or they start partying in the morning or they start making lots of noise and their dog is barking in the morning, you might wake up from your neighbors being so loud and you might say, I am sick and tired of my neighbors being so loud. This just means I'm very annoyed. I'm so annoyed that it's kind of making me sick and tired. Not really, but you know, this is a very dramatic expression. If you are sick and tired of something happening, you are just unmotivated, you don't want it to happen, you're just done with it. The opposite of being sick and tired, I would say is chomping at the bit. When someone says they are chomping at the bit to do something, it means they're very eager and excited. When I post a new English lesson on YouTube, I am absolutely chomping at the bit to read the comments and to read what you guys thought of the lesson and what new phrases and words that you learned. And I always try to respond back to the comments on the same day that the video is posted, so make sure to leave me a comment if you're watching this video right now so I can respond and see what you thought of it. So if you want to say that you're very eager to do something, you could say, I'm chomping at the bit. And obviously this idiom comes from the idea that if you were holding food 
in front of an animal, they would be jumping up trying to bite the food, trying to eat the food. They're chomping just at the little bit you're giving them. So if you're chomping at the bit to start something, to do something, to read something, to watch something, it means you are so excited and eager to do it. This simile to be cool as a cucumber, it's quite common to say, don't overuse this one again. I always say be careful with you know, these fun, playful similes because if you're in a serious situation, you don't wanna be saying I'm cool as a cucumber. But to your friends in a more fun and playful environment, just say I'm cool as a cucumber. This just means you're very calm and you have no stress. Some of the greatest athletes in the world are just cool as a cucumber when they are playing their sport. They don't feel the pressure that is facing them or they don't feel pressure, they don't feel stress, they just play their game because they are so experienced they can remain cool as a cucumber. This means just very calm and stress-free. The complete opposite of being cool as a cucumber is to say that you are wound up. If someone is wound up, it means they're very stressed out and they're talking fast and loud and they're freaking out. So if you say, wow, they're really wound up today, it means they're stressed out. They're maybe a little angry and agitated because of how stressed they are and they just cannot relax. I picture this idiom as, you know, one of those old fashioned wind up toys. When you wind up the gears, the toy starts moving really fast. If you call a person really wound up, it means that they have a lot of energy because they are so stressed out. So you can either be cool as a cucumber or wound up. So this lesson is all about everyday idioms. Now, of course, you need to be very careful, especially in America, when speaking about someone's intelligence. But you need to know these phrases because you'll definitely hear them and you may even need to use them at some point. If you want to say that someone is very smart, a really common idiom is they are just sharp as a tack. If you say someone is sharp, it means they're smart. So this simile, they're sharp as a tack, it's really common. Um, I had a great grandma. She lived to be about 94 years old. She was sharp as a tack until the day that she died. This just means like she never lost her memory or had any dimension or memory problems. She just remained really smart into her old age. She was sharp as a tack. I don't know why I keep snapping for that. But the opposite of calling someone sharp as a tack and a very offensive phrase, so be careful with this, is to say that someone is just as dumb as a rock. Now, I'm not gonna use a person for this example, but you might have seen a dog that just is stupid. I don't know how else to put it. Maybe this dog just keeps, you know, getting into trouble or the dog keeps just running away for no reason. It's just dumb as a rock. This simile is really common. Insulting way to say that someone or something is very stupid. They're as dumb as a rock. If you want to do something without really planning it and you're just trying to act like you know what you're doing but you really have no idea, you can just say, I'm totally winging it right now. When I sit down and I don't plan out what I'm going to say for my English lessons, I'm just totally winging it. And honestly, I never do that anymore because it never turns out very good. Now, the opposite of just winging something is to think it through. So when I think my lessons through, they turn out really good and they're very helpful for my students because I've planned them so thoroughly. Another way that we use this phrase, think it through, is if we say to someone, hey, do you really want to do this? I think you should think it through. This means think about what the results will be or what the effects will be of your actions or of your plan. So if you're not planning something and you're just doing it, you're weighing it, and if you think about it a lot and you have a really great plan, you are thinking it through. I really like these two next idioms. They are everyday idioms, but they're actually quite advanced. And I just think that they're just nice, colorful language that will help describe what you're trying to say. 
When you have an issue with someone or a problem with them and you want to discuss it with them, a really interesting phrase that we use in English is to say that we have a bone to pick with them. If you have a phrase in your language, let me know what it translates to in English in the comments. I'd love to hear about it because I just think this is such an interesting way to say that you have a problem that you want to discuss. So my mom would come up to me as a kid and be like, hey, I have a bone to pick with you. You need to stop throwing your dirty laundry on the floor, something like that. My mom was very clean as I was growing up, so a lot of the bones that she had to pick with me were about cleaning, especially cleaning my room. If you want to say that you don't have an issue, that you're really agreeing with someone, you're almost thinking the exact same way, you can say, we are on the same wavelength. So to say that you're on the same wavelength as someone, it just means that you're thinking almost the exact same way. You're not even saying something, but like you're doing something at the same time because you're so similar. You could use this phrase in a more formal situation, especially in business. If you want to say like, we totally agree, we totally have the same ideas. We are on the same wavelength. Another great idiom to say that you're really just unstressed, you have not a lot of things that are bothering you, is to just say, I can't be bothered. If you want to say that someone was not stressing out about something and they really weren't putting much effort even into anything, you could say, well, she can't be bothered. This phrase is really common to use when you want to say that someone is just not stressed about something. It can actually be used in a negative way as well to say that someone just doesn't care about something. So you could say, Linda just, she can't be bothered. She doesn't really care if she turns in her work on time. So this is a negative way, but if you just say, oh, I just can't be bothered today, it just means like nothing can stress me out or worry me today. If someone is very stressed out and doing a ton of work at one time, you can say that they are just burning the candle at both ends. Now, if you're burning a candle, it's getting burnt out. We often say in English that someone is burnt out when they just have been working too much or doing too many things at one time. They're very tired. If you say someone's burning the candle at both ends, it means they're going to be burnt out very soon because they are working so hard. I picture this as they're working late into the night and waking up early and beginning work again. They're just, they're working so much, they're going to be tired. If someone is working very fast, a common way that we say that they're going at a fast speed is to say they're going a mile a minute. This is just a really common way to say they're working fast or you could say they're talking a mile a minute. Even though these measurements just don't really make sense in this sentence, they're talking a mile a minute. We use this phrase just to say that someone is doing something very fast. A really common phrase to say that someone or something is very slow is to say that something is slow as molasses. Of course, molasses is a type of sweetener. It's a sticky sugar. I don't I don't really use molasses in my cooking, but yeah, it's just a very viscous material. It's very slow if you pour it out of a bottle. So if you say that someone is slow as molasses, it can be kind of rude. It's just saying that they're working slow or something is going very slowly. You have to wait. If you're impatient, you might say, wow, this is slow as molasses right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this English lesson with me. I know that you'll take these 26 idioms and use them in your everyday English conversation. If you want to learn more English with me, go ahead and check out my six week upgrade to native English conversation course. It's on englishwithkayla.com. You'll learn tons of new phrases just like these ones that will really help you in your conversations and you'll get professionally recorded conversations to practice your listening and speaking with. Thanks again for watching this English lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.